This is part 7 of the Chem 111 final review for the exam. We, we will be focusing on electrons during this review. Part of the focusing on electrons is looking at where the electrons are around the nucleus. To do that, we look at electron configurations. There's a couple different numbers that you have, a couple different items you have to pay attention to. One is the principal shell. This is telling you what energy level it is, the electron is, away from the nucleus. So if I have the nucleus here, energy level shell here, n is equal to 1 is here, 2 is here, 3 is here, so on and so forth. So you notice that the bigger the number, the further away it is from the nucleus also means that it can hold more electrons. Then S, P, D, and F is the shape that the probability of finding the electron is takes form. So S is kind of like a sphere. P is like a dumbbell shape. D is like a clover, meaning it's like two dumbbell shapes that are overlapping. And F is like two clovers overlapping. S can only hold two electrons, while P can hold six electrons. D can hold 10 electrons, and F can hold 14. This seems kind of confusing and it gets a little overwhelming, but if you use something called the alphabet chart, it allows you to figure out where the electrons are going in a systematic order, and it takes the confusion out of it. So what you do is you put the numbers 1 through 7 all the way down. And within these energy levels, the subshells are lying within it. So 1 is so small it can only afford S, where the second energy level here is a little bit bigger, so it can have S and P. 3 can have 3S, 3P, and 3D. 4 is 4S, 4P, 4D, and 4F. 5 is 5S, 5P, 5D, 5F. There are probably more energy areas more areas for electrons outside of F, but because there's not enough electrons to fill that area up, they haven't discovered it, or there is no need for it. 6S, 6P, 6D, 6F, 7S, 7P, 7D, 7F. Now, as said before, the S's have two electrons in it apiece. The P's have six electrons in them. The D's have ten. And the F's have fourteen. Now what is confusing for students is you don't enter the electrons from left to right. You don't go this direction. Instead, you actually enter it, the orbitals at an angle down. And that has to do with how many, how much energy each of these subshells have. So the electrons will go to 1s2 first, then 2s2, then 2p6, 3s2, then 3p6, and instead of going to 3d10, it's going to 4s2, and then back up to 3d10. And you just keep entering it down at an angle. And that's how you would recreate this chart if you're ever stuck. Now, granted, you can look on the periodic table and try to locate where it is on the periodic table and determine where the electrons are in doing the electron configurations that way. This just is a more systematic, this is just a different alternative. 
So notice this chart here. Once again, two is for soul is for the S orbitals, subshells. P's have six. D's have ten. And F's have fourteen. But notice how the arrows are going diagonally down. So to fill the, to figure out the electron configurations, you can go under these numbers. You cannot go over. So for instance, if you look at 7P6, you can have 7P4, you can have 7P5, but you cannot have 7P7. You cannot get, go over the number 6. So here's nitrogen. The atomic number is 7. So that's telling me it has seven protons. Notice that there's no charge here. So because there's no charge, the seven protons is the same as the seven electrons. So that means I need to figure out, it's supposed to be me. We have seven electrons here. I need to figure out where those electrons are. We start from the top, 1s2. Then we go down to the next line, 2s2. Go down to the next line, 2p, we have four of them here, two, four, we need three more, so it'd be 2p3. If you're just looking at the periodic table, you'll notice that one, two, three is in the second level. This is the s block, this is the p block, this is the d block. It's in the third row over of the, d, uh, of the p block. So second row down, p block, third atom over. S with a negative 3, instead of having 7, charge is equal to the protons minus the electrons. So 7 minus X is going to equal to negative 3. That means that X is going to be 10 electrons. So that means I need those little numbers to count off to 10 now. 1s2, 2s2, 2p, there's four of them there. I need three, I need six more. So instead of 2p3, it's now 2p6. Magnesium is here. It has 12. There's no charge, so that means I have 12 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 is 10. I'm right here. I'm going to go to 3s2. Because I need two more. Aluminum with a plus three is a technically 13 protons as a plus three charge. So that's going to be three, 13 minus X. That means X is going to equal to 10. So it's going to be the same as the N3 minus. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Those are isoelectronic because they're the same. Okay, so when we're looking at bonding, covalent versus ionic. Ionic is an attraction of positive and negative. The positive is the cations. The negative is the anion. So there's a cation and anion in it. Covalent, the electrons are being shared. And they can be shared evenly or not evenly. Polar covalent, this is not even. That means the electrons are closer, out to closer to one atom than the other. Nonpolar, that means that they are shared evenly. Octet rule means that there are eight electrons around the atom, and that has to do with the S and P block. The S has two, the P has six, so two plus six is eight. That's how you remember that. And that is where it's most stable because that's where the noble gases are, and the noble gases are the most stable. Hydrogen and helium are exceptions. If you look at them on the periodic table, here's hydrogen, here's helium. They're only going to get to 
2s2. They're only going to get to 1s2. They're not going to even get to the second energy level, so there's no way that I could possibly have 8. So hydrogen and helium will both only have 2 electrons. Ionization energy is the energy it takes to remove an electron. And it, get, and it goes up and to the right. So fluorine is the most electronegative. And the closer to fluorine, the greater the ionization energy. So let's do some of those structures. Magnesium is here. It's in the second row. You know how many electrons something has by what row it's in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's in the second row. So magnesium has two electrons. Oxygen is here. It has six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. You go around singles first and then go back and pair them up. With magnesium oxide, it's an ionic compound because it starts with a metal. The electrons are given away to the oxygen. So magnesium now has nothing around it. And oxygen, rather than having six electrons, now has eight. And we put a little box on it saying that those all belong to him. And he now has a minus two charge. We can take a look at how the electrons are sharing the, how the atoms are sharing the electrons when we look at molecular compounds. Once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember the octet. Nitrogen is right here. It brings five electrons. Hydrogen is right here. It only brings one. However, there's three of them, so three times one is three. You have a total of eight electrons. Five plus three. So, we put the least electronegative element in the middle, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen is never in the middle because it can only have two electrons. And you surround it with the other atoms. Count up the electrons. Each line has two electrons, and then each dot has one electron. So here's two, four, six. Hydrogen can't have more than two electrons, so hydrogen has already reached its max because both of these go to hydrogen and they go to nitrogen because they're being shared. So we have six electrons used up. We can't put any more on the outside, so we put the remaining two electrons on the central atom. When we look at the geometry, we have four electron groups. So the lone pairs are considered part of the electron groups. So here's our four electron groups. It's in the tetrahedral for the electron pair geometry. However, we do have a lone pair. One lone pair puts us into the trigonal pyramidal. This is going to be our last one, OCl2. We number the rows again. O is here. Oxygen gives us six electrons. Chlorine gives us seven. But we have two of them, so we're going to multiply that by two to be 14. Six plus 14 is 20 electrons total. Put the least electronegative element in the middle. That will be oxygen. And you bond the other ones around it. Chlorine and chlorine. So we have two, four of them used up already. That means we have 16 electrons left. 
you put them around the outside you let outside atoms first until they make an octet. So we have chlorine already has two from the bond. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we had to add six from this chlorine, and we had six from this chlorine. So we have a total of 12 electrons in lone pairs around chlorine. So minus 12, that still gives us four electrons left over. So those go on the center atom. One, two, three, four. Does oxygen now have an octet? We have two from, two from this bond. Two from this bond, so that's four. Lone pair here, lone pair here. So that's a total of eight. So that's our, that's our Lewis structure right here. We have one, two, three, four electron groups here. So that puts us in the tetrahedral range. We have two sets of lone pairs. So for the molecular geometry, we have bent. You're going to want to memorize this chart so that way you know what the shapes are supposed to be. And you can relate it to the Lewis structures. And that is the end of the final exam review.